A lot of people say, oh, the gospel comes without sensation. Well, I can show you a quote where the prophet said that. That's, that's good. The gospel comes without sensation. But I can also show you a quote where he said, if something is not moving, if something, if something is, if, if it doesn't move you, if you don't get emotional about it, if God don't, if God don't stir your heart, and there isn't stimulation there, it's because of one reason. You're dead. Amen. Dead. Something inside you should stir your heart and wake you up and shake you and make you understand there's an impulse on the inside that when you hear certain things, you say, that is right. I believe that. And you might not understand it at the time. But common sense tells me after 6,000 years and no one, not one place in the Scripture can you show me where anybody got up out of the grave and lived on. They may have got up, but they went back. Lazarus went back. Every one of them went back to the grave. And, but there's only one because he's the only one that needed to get up. And that was Jesus Christ. And all the rest of them are in him. And we don't have to get up out of that grave. Impulse. When you hear it, you say, I believe that. Expectations. Let's read just a little bit here. Psalm 62. Paul is talking about a people who hear it and then it lives in them. Truly my soul waiteth upon God. From him cometh my salvation. He only is my rock. Now let's watch, let's watch David here, how he writes. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. So here's David starting out. He's writing about the Lord. He's writing about how his soul is waiting upon God. From him cometh my salvation. David David is, has an expectation that things are going to come from God to him. He's desperate for what God is doing. My soul, he comes down to the fifth verse, my soul, wait thou only upon God. Now, how many knows what wait means? It doesn't mean go over here and sit down in a corner and wait. And say, well, God will come someday. You know, I'll wait. Look up the word wait. It means serve. Like you go to a restaurant and you have a waiter or a waitress. They wait on you. They don't sit in a corner. Wouldn't you get upset if you if you went in and sat down at the table, Brother Tom, and you was wanting your breakfast about six AM and about seven thirty AM nobody had come yet and the waiter's just sitting over there looking at you? And you say, What are you doing? She say, I'm waiting. Exactly what I was hired to do. I'm I'm waiting. <laughs> you say, No, you're not doing what you were hired to do. You're supposed to a waiter is supposed to serve. And that's what he is saying here, my soul serves God. From him comes my salvation. I can't do anything but serve him. He's my rock and my salvation. He's my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. My soul wait thou only upon God. Only serve God. Do not serve anything else. Do not serve another God. Do not serve anything outside of God and God alone. For my expectation is from him. He only is my rock and salvation. He is my defense. Now watch David. I shall not be moved. Now he first wrote, I shall not be greatly moved. <laughs> In other words, somebody could move me if they really worked on me. But after he gets into the spirit a little bit, into the expectation, into looking at what God really did for him, all of a sudden through impulse... Through desperation, he screams out and says, I shall not be moved. Amen. Why didn't he write that in the first verse? Because he didn't feel that way in the first verse. In the first verse, he felt like he could be moved a little bit. But by the time he gets to thinking about the Lord, he realizes, I cannot be moved. God is in my life and, and nothing can move me. I'll stand on this word no matter what. That's what happens to us. That's why I'm talking to you about vibration, about impulse, about expectations, about desperation. You say to yourself, uh, I get these feelings. I, I, sometimes I feel like I'm worthless. Sometimes I feel like uh, I can't serve God enough. Sometimes I feel like God's not pleased with me. Sometimes I feel like I need to repent. I feel that way every minute, every hour of the day. I feel worthless. I feel like I need to repent. I feel like I need to do a lot of things different. I feel that way every day. And that's a good sign. The person who sits dead as a doornail and hard as a rock 
and nothing moves them and they don't care and they don't have feelings and they don't get into the emotional side of what God is doing, I'll tell you why. It's because they're hard-hearted and they're dead and they don't know how to feel God. God is looking for people that have feeling, looking for people that have impulse, looking for people that are expecting things to happen for them. God loves that kind of a people. 